Moving on from sports science to, to scouting and recruitment. So Celtic announced at the start of May that Mark Lawwell would be coming in as head of scouting and recruitment following close to 10 years in a similar role with the City Football Group. For anyone not familiar with the City Group, that covers the likes of Man City, New York, Melbourne and Ange's old club, Yokohama Marinos. And Ange says that he had a, a solid working relationship with Mark Lawwell during his time there and it seems very much that, you know, Mark and Peter Lawwell and the connections at that time were key to Ange coming to Celtic. Miff, I know you like a quote from Ange, so I'm going to give you another one here. Don't make me laugh. Uh, he said, I was very keen for Mark to join the club and clearly I'm delighted that he's accepted this important role and that we've been able to bring him to Celtic. Mark is someone who I worked closely with throughout my four years at Marinos, through which time we developed great trust and an excellent working relationship. He knows the way I like to work, the way my teams play and the particular player profiles which this requires. I know he'll be a great addition to our team, leading our first team scouting and recruitment function and delivering on our key objective of identifying and bringing exciting, talented players to the club. Miffy's obviously son of Peter Lobel. Uh, some will care about this, some won't, but purely in terms of his CV, it would seem to be a very good appointment for the club, wouldn't it? I think it's a very simple thing for me. If Ange wants him, it'll do for me. You know, whether he's got a pink Gantt shirt or no, I don't really care. Um, it's, it's really just down to the fact that He's worked with Ange before, he's identified the types of players that Ange feels he can work with. That That's the template we want. Um, there will be cynicism because of the, the, the obvious connection. But 10 years at the City Group, and you know, I can only assume he's doing something right because I don't think they would have put up him for very long if he hadn't been bringing the type of player that they needed in to put through their, almost their factory as it is at different levels of the game in America and Fra Troy and France as well yeah, yeah. It's sorry it's, it's um, also what he's the environments he's been in what he's picked up from others and the structures and all that kind of stuff contacts that will yeah. have you know all, all those different things so seems a good fit to me he's been at the elite level and, and excellence is just a, a standard at these kind of places James so that that can't be a bad thing we've not heard much from him at all I, I believe he was serving a, quite an extended notice period I presume he's now in the building but you know We've not really heard a thing at all. Not that the head of recruitment generally comes out and does interviews just to say, hi, I'm here kind of thing. Maybe but they should. Um, but you would expect there's a lot of work going on in the background just now, wouldn't you? We'll, we'll see it in January. You know, I think that'll be the first uh, the first fruits of the his labour. Um, and by all accounts, you know, he knows exactly what he's doing. So it's, you know, for how many years have we just been at it? You know what I mean? Just playing at it. And, and now this is... Structured, organised, progressive to your word, Paddy. Mm -hmm. In the final throws of the, the Rogers era, um, us signing Shved, unknown to Rogers, yeah. you know, that was a, a damning indictment on the way the club was being run. And, and you know, I know we're, we're all, we've all got opinions on, on Rogers, but he'd obviously had enough of just that type of thing. Yeah. So the fact that we're so far removed for that now, again, it, it's just like the the debate about the, the quality of the squad in the Champions League, are you learning the lessons that, you know, history's thrown up to you? And and on this occasion it appears that we are, we, we can't be letting things like that happen again. Yeah. I think so, and I think what we often seen, whether it was Rodgers, Lennon's time, Ronnie Dylas, you name it, some of the players that, that Celtic took on board at these times are incredible and, you know, we've not got enough time to get through the list of failures. Brendan Rodgers' signings were horrific. And they, I don't... If they were his. I, I was going to say, I don't hugely blame Bre Brendan Rodgers for them. If it was, you take him or you take nothing, you take him, whoever he may be. But there was so many poor signings and that was a... That was a long-term thing at the club. You know, that's something that's happened for a long time. And all of a sudden, Ange comes in, he signed a lot of, a lot of bodies and... Some won't be successful, but by and large, his strike rate's very impressive, Paddy. Whether we want to admit this or not, we we down literally we down tools because we knew domestically we were gonna we were gonna run away with the league over the last over the last uh, nine nine seasons that we were, we done nine in a row. I think that obviously that Scottish Cup semi final um, back in two thousand and sixteen was an eye opener that you know let's flex the muscle a little bit. It wasn't the full way, it, mm -hmm. and it re you know you see the state of things. Um, it was left to rot almost. For those seasons, in my opinion, you know the the leagues were guaranteed. The players, the level, like the caliber of players were coming in, were enough domestically and only enough. I mean, I, I look at Kazim Richards, Carlton Cole, Big Z. for ex for example. Players like that coming in were just enough just to to see us through with what we were doing. And it left, you know, it caught us out. It caught us out when we wanted to go and and win ten in a row. I hope 
that under this new leadership and under this new structure, that can't happen again. Not that it doesn't happen again, it can't, um, especially in this modern day of football. And I just think that they, they really learn from the lessons there. And yeah, and, and here's hoping it just continues in the right way. Yeah, and what I'd say is it was obviously painful not to do the 10. That was a hell of a season and, you know, tough for all, all supporters. But positives have come from it. You know, dare I say, lessons have been learned to Miff's point and we feel miles away you know, in a very positive way from what we were at that moment in time. And with the fact that we're now talking about Kobayashi coming in in January and as I say that, you know, the various other names will start to come up, it does suggest that we're just in a far better place there and that, you know, the planning's underway already for future windows. Absolutely. And I, I know listeners, watchers, if you fancy a laugh, just go back to episodes two to yeah, about maybe 20 odd of the early podcast if you want to hear me basically nearly greeting every week. <laughs> um, it, it, was a, it was a tough time, but in, in many ways, I think Paddy makes an excellent point. The board get to get out of jail card with Rogers because mm-hmm. he managed to bring that element of professionalism to the squad that had been, I'd say, left to rot would, would be the great example to give. I think it was very obvious. A guy like Collins would want to bring a certain standard in. Senior pros in the dressing room weren't they very up Char- for that. Charlie McGrew, Chris Collins. You know, yeah. those types of guys on. weren't they up yeah. for that. There was a there was a chasm in the, in the dressing room. Colin Chasm Richards, just a chasm. <laughs> and, um, That's bad. Then from that, Rogers, you know, look at who Rogers ushered out the door. Early doors tells you everything you need to know. Brought the professionalism. I went back to rehabilitate Derek Derek Boyata's Celtic career rather than go out and buy a centre half. Things like that tell you mm. that probably the money wasn't there that should have been there for him. Um, Every Champions League campaign we near beat on at centre half, you know th- those wee things that you now look back on. You just thinking of the way Ange operates, you just wouldn't have that going forward. Would, would Ange ever play Cal McGregor at left back? Yeah, don't, you know, don't, don't bring that don't, up. Don't. That's that's it. Aye, aye. That, that's how badly well, planned we, we were. Aye. You are having to do that. Yep. Yeah, but we're in a very different place in a very positive way from there. From there, and long may that continue.